I sure did. I went to a bear meetup about two and a half hours from my house, hung out with a bunch of my bears, had a great time. I actually went to their house last year, and this was their, I guess, the second annual, so I was very excited about that. Hung out, had some burgers, had some good food, told stories around the fire. The children ran around like little maniacs. It's exactly, exactly what we should all be doing. Like, yeah, I got the scully on. It's you know kind of hard to hear myself. I'll leave the ears open a little bit. All right, let's grab TikTok. Good morning, TikTok. You are here with YouTube, and it is a beautiful day here in the sunny south. Don't mistake it. Just because I have this beautiful allegedly hat on does not mean it's not beautiful out here. I'm watching my plants get watered, and they look oh so happy. So today we're going to talk about the creative child, and I really... Something got me thinking yesterday where there is this new tech that everyone's using, Doll E2, where essentially people are generating artwork with artificial technology. And I knew about this tech for a while before everyone was talking about it. And I actually had played with it um, to try to make some art for some of my lesson plans that I make. Um, if you look at our study into the medical industrial complex, some of that was, a, you know what, I, I didn't use it. Some of that was originally generated by artificial intelligence, allegedly. I, I don't think it's actual, actually AI. I think it's machine learning. But anyway, so there's been the buzz around the internet. So basically, you go to this website, Dal E2, um, D-A-L-E, and you type in some type of parameter. So you type in... A bear with orange hair playing a violin. And this artificial intelligence, allegedly, this AI technology, will then generate a bear with orange hair playing a violin. You could add details with a nature background, pine trees, and the sun. And boom, 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 boom. And it will pop up. And it's pretty amazing tech and they have to work out the kinks, but eventually it's going to get better and better and better. And there's so many layers to this story that we could break down, but I kind of like to break it down from an educational perspective. I kind of like to break it down from the artistic perspective because I see a lot of black pillars, a lot of people who say, oh, you see, we're being replaced by the artificial intelligence. We're being you know, all of a sudden you have all of these concept artists who are out of work. I said, not if you educate them right. You educate a concept artist right or an artist right, and they will never be out of work. Because if we're educating our children the right way, we need to channel into, we need to tap into that aspect of children that is probably superior to, superior to everything else in that they have truly elite creative minds. You could give a child a box and they could turn it into a spaceship. You can give a child blankets and they could turn it into a military fort. Children have incredible creative energy. And that's coming from someone who objectively, myself, has a ton of creative energy, right? I mean, I've written the Cubs to Bears books, but even on um a deeper level, the lesson plans that I create every day, it's all creative energy, right? Last night, we released a lesson plan in which children, first they learn how to paint a deciduous tree, which is a tree which their leaves has fallen off of. Then we have them look up the word deciduous because who knows what that word is? I didn't know, right? So we teach them the habit of looking up words step by step. How do you paint a deciduous tree, a tree without leaves? Then they take Q-tips. They bundle them up together with a rubber band. Set up acrylic paint, yellow, blue, red, orange. 
And then what they do is you dab the Q-tips into the acrylic paint, and then you use that to create the leaves, right? And your children create this beautiful art project. And then as they're doing that, we actually do a little study. It's just one slide, but it's all they need into what is the proper way to remove acrylic paint from a paintbrush. Hold on, I'm getting a phone call. Getting a phone call. What is the proper way to remove acrylic paint from a paintbrush so that your children understand the step-by-step -step process of doing this art? These simple questions that a lot of people that when they teach art would gloss over. But I used to think that you take the brush and you put water on it. But what acrylic paint requires is friction. So you take the brush, you dip it in the water. <laughs> yeah. Um, you take a brush, you dip it in the water, and then you rub it back. In, my wife was actually just texting me. Right before I came on the stream, I went to sit down, and in my chair was a bone of what seemingly is an animal's jaw. So I took a picture of this jaw, this bone that was literally right here. It's right there. I'm looking at it. Um, you guys want to see it? There's a, literally a dead animal jaw. Um, on the chair next to me. So I texted it to Nicole because she's at the store. <clears throat> and she just got back to me. She called me. And anyway, you guys want to check this out? Do one at a time. Look at that, YouTube. YouTube's looking right now. Hold on. TikTok, you're next. All right, YouTube. What do you guys think that? What do you guys think that is? Look at that thing. That's in my seat where I sit every day. Welcome to the South, where everything wants to kill you. It's pretty dope, right? You can see the teeth. Everything's venomous here. There's bears. That's why I have my right to bear arms. I mean, that's what these northern people don't understand. All right, these coastal elites. Like, there's stuff that wants to kill you around here. So anyway, I was getting back to the... <laughs> getting back to the art, right? So you have all these black pillars, and they see this artificial intelligence, and they say... And I'll get into why I don't think it's artificial intelligence. But you get all these black pillars, and they say, oh, well, all of these concept artists, they've been put out of work. And not if you educate your children right, because... You shouldn't just be teaching your children skills. You should be teaching them entrepreneurship, right? And if you do that, for example, and this is an example I love to give. Let's say your child gets good with these acrylic paints. They start painting and whatnot. Well, you can go to five and below with your 10-year-old. You can buy $200 worth of shoes. It's 20. It's about 40 shoes. It's probably like 30-something with tax and whatnot. But... You can buy 30 plus shoes, bring them to your house. Your child can make original custom designs on those shoes. They could sell them to a local store at, at wholesale. They could sell them at a farmer's market. They could sell them online on Facebook Marketplace. They can make an Instagram page. They can make a web page. There is so much you can do with art that AI can never replace, right? One of the things that I do is I write children's books. And you say, oh, well, you get ready. The AI will write children's books. AI will never write children's books that are as rooted in taboo truth as the type of things that I write about. So my art, my creative mind is protected. And my entrepreneurial spirit, spirit makes it irreplaceable. And with our children, we don't want to just teach them skills, but we want to get them that entrepreneurial experience. So we want to teach them art and then we want to have them write their own children's book or poetry book or cookbook and publish it on Amazon KDP. And we have members of our homeschool community right now that are working on that process that I'm very excited about. I think it's really cool, right? You want to go to five and below, buy those shoes and have your children start their own little business in which they're selling shoes. 
We want to take our children. We want to develop skills. We want to pair those skills with entrepreneurial experience. And by doing that, we make them truly irreplaceable. So there is no black pill. There will always be opportunities. In fact, like if I'm designing a logo for a business, because one of the things I love for artists is to start a business in which they design logos. I, uh, I, I know someone who designs logos and they charge um, almost $2,000 a logo that they make, right? How many of those do you need a year to earn a living, right? I mean, if you get hired by 20 people at that rate, that's $40,000, right? If you get pay, hired by 30 people, that's $60,000. If you get hired by 50 people over the course of one year, you made $100,000. And that's with a simple logo design business, right? So it's not that hard to earn a living. It just takes a little bit of creativity. And I know like a lot of people get triggered by that and they're like, how dare you? You know, if it was that easy, I wouldn't be working this rat race job. It, it's just, it's a mindset thing. It's, but you're, you could raise your children with that mindset. Raise your children with a winning mindset. Isn't that amazing? That like from that, like so many people, I'm not knocking them. I just, but so many people spend their lives feeling trapped, feeling like they can't make it as entrepreneurs. They can't make it independently. They have to be reliant on a boss who they hate. They hate their job. They can't find any way out of it. And it's like just conceptually like that. You take one skill as an artist, you do some good marketing, $2,000 a pop, and 20 clients later, you made $40,000 in a year, right? And that's, that's a simple business that a person can do independently. They don't need a team, right? They could do it themselves. Happy Indigenous Peoples Day. I guess. I guess. You know, when I grew up, is it Columbus Day? When I grew up, I should make a video about Columbus Day. Thanks, I forgot it was Columbus Day. When I grew up, Christopher Columbus was the guy. That was the guy, right? I was in school, and I sat there with my teachers, and they said, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492, and he is the man that guy. Okay. And then by the time I graduated high school, the narrative, the political narrative had already shifted and he went from being the man to the bad man. And I was like, what changed? Did the history change? The hit? No, the history didn't change. The facts they knew or allegedly facts that they knew. I mean, I question early American history, but the alleged facts that they knew didn't change. What changed? The politics, right? Um, when I was young, they were really pushing American military imperialism. So Columbus was the good guy. And by the time I graduated high school um, and a little after, they were really starting to push replacing um, Western populations with populations from what they call the third world. I think that's quite an insult. And I also don't think these people are as poor as they say they are in the third world. But because of that, they wanted to make people have a guilt. Like this isn't your land. Like you don't belong here. Like, like there's any difference in replacing us now with a foreign population than there was replacing the indigenous people back then. It was wrong back then and it's wrong now. It's wrong to replace populations of people. It's all colonialism and imperialism and it's just in a different form and people are just generally lack the intelligence to understand why that is. I mean, I, I could talk to you about the seven Iroquois tribes and people are like, well, the colonists, the American colonists were so wrong were so wrong for what they did to the seven Iroquois tribes. You sure about that? You ever heard of the Beaver Wars? Like, what, what do you mean? No, they all lived in, in peace and harmony. No, they didn't. You ever hear of the Beaver Wars? Well, the tribes were fighting with each other, right? 
the Mohawks were up in, in upstate New York and they were literally cutting out hearts and eating them and scalping and whatnot, you know, crushing. I'm not knocking them. I think the Mohawks were crushing, but uh, I think, I think we need a little masculinity in this world, but so the Mohawks were crushing, but they were all fighting and they were having this, um, this conflict, right? There's a big conflict over trade routes between all these different tribes. And, um, so the Mohawks, they partner with the French, right? And then their rival Indian tribes brought in the Dutch and the English. They were like, hey, we got this fight with the Mohawks. Can you help us out? And they were like, sure, right? Because that was their way in. But they were invited in. That's the thing. Like people, they're like, oh, that's the devil. You invited the devil in. And now you want to be a victim. So then you had these beaver wars and they invited the Europeans in. They're fighting back and forth. And, um, and, and that's all going on. Well, when the French and the um, English were fighting as part of the French and, and Indian War, the Indian tribes saw that as an opportunity to take land from one another. So that's why they joined the English and the French, that the French and Indian War, right? So the, the, they saw an opportunity to get land. So now you had these tribes and they were fighting on the same side as the American colonists, right? So they're on the same, they're on the same side, Kumbaya, French and Indian War. It's all good, right? We're on the same side. Well, after the French and Indian War, after the French and Indian War, the King of England decided that the American colonists had to pay for that war. He decided it was their bill. Well, that created a conflict between the American colonists and, um, and Europe, right? And I understand this is different than what Columbus was in a different part of the world, right? These were different countries, but I'm talking about America. So now you had the American colonists who were butting heads with the King of England. Well, the indigenous tribes, again, saw this as an opportunity to get land and money and power. So they, rather than staying out of the war, they joined the King of England and attacked the American colonists. So now the American colonists win that war. Why would they have any respect for those people that were their friends, right? Those were allies. And now, and now they're getting attacked by them. And now you beat them. Yeah, history is not as, as concrete as victims, victims, oppressors. No, like most, usually in history, everyone's the bad guy. Like when you deal with all these conquests and these territorial disputes, and I'm not saying the colonists were good either. Like they were doing a lot of uh, terrible things, but you know, it's like you get like um, these people today and they're like oppressors. And it's like, no, 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 no. Those, those tribes invited the devil in. And when you, when you play on the devil's playground, you get the devil's reward, right? You play stupid games, you get stupid prizes, right? Greed. Their downfall was the product of their greed. It was the product of their sin. Allegedly. You know? So... All of these narratives you get are politically driven nonsense. So you could say indigenous people day. And I, I mean, I get that. Like, you know, what Columbus did, he, he is not a good guy. That's a bad man. By the way, I mean, I haven't looked too into it, but I'm pretty sure, don't quote me. I could get more into this gravy, but um, Columbus comes from the Columbu family. And Columbu is one of the 13... They change their name a lot to hide who they are, but one of the 13 most powerful families in the world, which is why Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, right? Like, and anyway, these people are extremely extremely powerful, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Right. So it's like a lot of these narratives, you know, I, I guess people like to virtue signal with that stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. Like it's history is not as concrete 
it's not as concrete. Like, I, I'm not even sure, like, in my opinion, there were civilizations in the Americas. I, I don't, I don't understand the full history, but in my opinion, there were civilizations in America that were not told about. Um, and they were relatively sophisticated, very sophisticated. They were wiped out. And a lot of the people that they say were brought here from another continent against their will were actually here already. And a lot of that history is a lie. A lot of that history is a lie. You saw Kanye West called out a group of people. Kanye, he called out a group of people about how they control, you know, like social media and Hollywood and whatnot. And, um, you know, and obviously he's wrong. He's wrong. So just like Nick Cannon and Whoopi Goldberg, there, there's a backlash happening. Who gets a backlash? What, what does the word backlash come from? Who used to get a backlash when they called out their masters? I don't know. I wouldn't call them out because I don't want a backlash. But who, who, there was, what would happen? They call out the master, backlash. Where does that word come from? Nick Cannon felt that. Whoopi felt that. Now Kanye's getting that. I don't know. I digress. I, I have no comment on <laughs> no comment. You know, I call out a lot of stuff. That's why like, I've kind of come around on like, I'm not, you know, I make a lot of videos about like the CIA and the FBI and the nefarious things they've done in this country. And they, they've done a lot of nefarious things, but like I could call out the CIA and the FBI all, you know, all day, every day and nothing happens. And, you know, my rule, you know, what I say is if you really want to know who's in charge, just figure out what you can't criticize, figure out what you can't criticize. And then you'll figure out who's in charge. Right. And like, it's funny. Cause that's why, like, I don't trust like DeSantis and, um, like DeSantis Trump cause they make all these laws where you can't even criticize, like, they've made laws where you, DeSantis made laws where you can't boycott businesses from another country. Well, have you ever heard of, um, you know, I got to be careful with my gravy here, but there's this company, Teva, and um, they're in that industry that spends more money lobbying than any other industry. Well, they're out of that country, and they have a monopoly over, the chemicals that are used to um, alter the way that young children are born if they, you know, if they think they are something else, right? Again, look how I have to talk about this. So, like, yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I do know. And if we sat down in person, I'd really explain it. But, you know, and by the way, there's not an ounce of hatred in my heart, um, in fact, little known thing about me, I, I am actually, um, I am actually, um, according to how they keep track of things, like if I wanted right now, I could get a free trip. I could get a free trip to Israel right now because of my bloodlines. They would give me a free trip. Like, uh, cause my mother was that my grandmother's that, um, so I could get like a pilgrimage. So Anyway, food for thought. This is how the world actually functions. <laughs> Haven't seen you in a while. Hope all is well. Well, yeah, that's why, like, when they say third world, like, you'll hear these guys like, you'll hear these guys like Ben Shapiro. And they're like, oh my God, these poor people, they live on a dollar a day. And I'm like, yeah, they're poor people if your measurement of wealth is dollars. 
like in your backwards worldview. So if they only need a dollar a day, they're probably pretty self-sufficient outside of dollars. They're probably a lot freer than what the average American would be, right? Because maybe they grow their food. Maybe they um, have their own water sources, right? They build their own houses. So you're like, oh, they only live on a dollar a day. Wow, that sounds great. It sounds like they're not relying on central banking. I bet that really bothers you, Ben Shapiro. Allegedly. Anyway, that's really what I wanted to cover today. Um, I like that you guys get me thinking about different things. The wealth of nutrients in the soil is astonishing. I'm looking at land in Costa Rica. Yeah, I hear Costa Rica is a great place. I, um, I was watching this guy on YouTube, this one guy who set up a, a whole food forest in Costa Rica. And because the, the climate is so tropical... Like, he was literally growing chocolate. Because for those of you that don't know, chocolate comes from cacao, um, which is something you grow, right? Sorry, when things make... There's literally a dead animal skull next to me. So when things make um, certain noises, you know, I just want to check what they are. You know. I think that's just the squirrels. I mean, I'm sure Lucy's prepared to protect me, but she weighs about 20 pounds, so. I got you, girl. Let's be honest. We know if it goes down, it's, it's probably going to be you who runs and me who protects. I love the girl, but she's a little skittish, you know. But you'll bark. You do good barking. All right. I actually, once we get into the forest, I want to, um, I actually want to get a big dog. I want to get like a German shepherd or something ferocious that, cause here's the thing. Like right now I'm at my temporary property, but come March, I would think around March, I'm going to be in my permanent homestead and like my permanent homesteads in the middle of a forest. Like, in a forest and very rural area, and we'll be dealing with a lot of bears, a lot of, um, a lot of big cats, bears, big cats, snakes, um, fox, weasels. So it's like, I wouldn't mind having a bigger dog that I could train to defend the children if need be, because then I can have my dog follow the children around and, you know, obviously I adhere to the second amendment. So when I get there, I could properly defend the family. But when you're talking about bears and, and some of these big animals, um, you know, that could be the difference between life and so, you know, no joke here. Yeah, eventually, over time, um, I'd like to have four big dogs on the property. You know, I, I like the idea of pits, although I get a little nervous with, with pits because as much as I love them, I have heard, like, I have heard horror stories of things going wrong with pits. So they make me a little nervous, but there's a lot of other dogs that are, um, there's less of those problems. But, like, it's not the dog's fault. It's just if you're going to have a dog like that, you really have to establish yourself as the alpha over that dog. And if you don't do that correctly, it could cause big problems. And that's like, you know, it's easy to say that, but it's easier said than done. Like, you got to know what you're doing. You got to do it right. You got to put in the time. But more than anything, like, that dog 
has to know that you're that dog. Like, when you train a dog like that, that dog has to know that you're that dog. And a lot of people don't get that. That's why, like, you'll see, like, a lot of, like, 5'2 women who are like, oh, I'm getting a pit bull. And it's like, all right, all right, if you can handle it. And, like, they think they can, but, and some can, but that dog, the way those dogs operate is it's a very, um, hierarchical order and you have to be that dog. You got to be the top dog. And I'm not even saying I could be that top dog. Like that's, it's a big responsibility. So that makes me a little nervous. How did Pat life go? Awesome. Um, Melissa, I can't wait until you listen to, I don't know when he's going to upload it probably sometime this week, but I can't wait until you listen to this. Benjamin Balderson, this guy, uh, it was myself, Pat life on the Pat life podcast who Pat is beyond a genius and his show is just great. And Benjamin Balderson and Benjamin Balderson. Like when I talk about gravy, yo, my short list is probably Owen Benjamin, Crow from Crow 777 Radio, and Benjamin Balderson are the three most prolific gravy machines I've ever come across. Like, I'm good, but I'm not in that stratosphere. Like, you know, I'm more technical. The gravy they lace is just insane, or ladle, I should say. But Balderson basically went over, because I, I, I reached out to Pat. So for those of you that don't know, I put together a lot of science experiments for kids. And it's like last week we used air pressure to crush a Coke can, which is like super cool and whatnot. You learn the science and the scientific method. But there's still something lacking from that. Because I want children to be able to use science to physically break down and put together the biological world around them because that enables them to do entrepreneurial things, that enables them to do health things that people that don't understand can't do. So, and a lot of people get triggered by this stuff, but just set aside the spiritual part of it, right? So I started doing a little bit of reading into alchemy. Because I was looking for ways to introduce alchemy to children. And when I say alchemy, here's what I'm talking about. It overlaps with science, but here's what I'm talking about. Benjamin Balderson broke down step by step to me. This is what alchemy is. How to take a lavender plant, break it down, separate its carbon, its sulfur, its seven layers of essential oils, and it's salt. Remove the carbon, remove the sulfur, have a pile of salt and seven layers of essential oil over 40 days. Balderson broke down step by step how to take a biological organism and break it down to its root elements, its most basic elements. Do you know the value in having the skill set to take a lavender plant And break it down where you separate the carbon, the sulfur, the salt, and the oil. I mean, you're talking about your children, by the time they're 20, could literally have a lavender farm in which they take the lavender, they break it down, they extract the essential oils, they sell the essential oils, which, by the way, they sell for a lot of money. Um, They could do stuff with the salts, right? These are the type of skills that I want to make sure that our children have. So I, want, I, I texted Pat and I was like, hey, do you know anything about um, introducing alchemy to, to young kids? And he was like, well, I could get you on with Benjamin Balderson. So I wound up speaking with Balderson and he broke it down step by step. And I'm going to actually put together a, a unit study now that is going to be on the alchemy of breaking down plants to their root level and extracting essential oils. And then we could even... Um, embed entrepreneurial stuff into that. So the talk with Balderson was just absolutely next level. He is like, he has forgotten more about the world 
than I even know in my entirety. That That's the type of gravy that Balderson is capable of ladling. And it was an honor to talk to him. It was it was pretty cool because I didn't realize this, but he said he was familiar with my work and he's a big fan of what I do, which I was like, oh, shoot. You know, I like, I've gotten to the point in my life where like, see, people have lame heroes. Like people's heroes are like LeBron James and Tom Hanks. And I have no respect for these people. But like the people that I really respect in this world, Owen Benjamin, Crow 777, Benjamin Balderson, Pat Life. Holy shit, it just dawned on me. Every one of them, the people I admire most in this world, every one of them has had me on their show now and told me they're a fan of my work. <laughs> oh, man. Man, I love what I do. I love what I do. That's some shit. That is some shit. This has been some journey for me, guys. These are the people I respect more than anyone in the world. These are... That's something. So anyway, Balderson, he broke... He broke it down. Anchor Bear. I watched Anchor Bear live this year. Playing live music. Well, by anyone who doesn't follow Anchor Bear, go on Spotify. Um, type in Anchor Bear or Anchor Tones. Whatever it is. The guy is out of this world. You want to talk about bass and moral music? That is something. Wow. Wow. That's exactly it. I'm going to be homeschooling there. I want to grow Moringa to sell back to the north. What is Moringa? I'm not familiar. Moringa. Should I know what that is? Um, that's awesome, though. Yeah, get into to permaculture. Definitely do our nature unit study. It goes without saying, our year-long nature unit study. I'm getting a barn car for rats. What does that even mean, Melissa? Are you breeding rats? What does that mean? I don't know what Moringa is. I don't know why Melissa's breeding rats. <laughs> are you selling them? What are we doing? I have an Aussie Shepherd. Great land dogs. Oh, that's cool. Aussie Shepherd. Yeah, I got to look into what dog is the best. They have to be really good with children. They have to be incredibly brave. They have to be smart and they have to be alert. And um, that's what I'm looking for because I'm really, I'm going to be looking for a dog that I could train essentially to follow around the children and if need be, Get to work. And the livestock and the animals. Because I'm, I'm going to have chickens, bees, eventually goats, cows. I might wait a little bit on the goats and the cows. But I'm doing the chickens and the bees right away. Step by step. Yeah, Melissa, I'm definitely going to let you know. I want the whole community to watch it. Because I want them to hear Balderson talk about alchemy and the breaking down like i want the community to understand it what i'm what i'm teaching um we have bokivina bosavina shepherds fiercely loyal to the family let's take screenshots of some of these aussie shepherds low-key hard to find good homeschool curriculum that is secular Yay. Well, I mean, that's probably a testament to how much, honestly, that's a testament to how much Christians crush. Like when people say that, they're like, it's hard to find good secular homeschool curriculum. I'm like, yeah, man, Christians crush. I mean, my curriculum's kind of secular, although I am an ardent follower of Christ, but I don't like, 
I don't throw that in the face of my curriculum. Other, my curriculum is just the good, the true, and the beautiful. So, like, in my opinion, that is Christ. Like, that is God. But I don't, it's not about, like, not about. I shouldn't call it, I don't, disclaimer, I don't call it curriculum because um, I haven't hired high powered attorneys yet and I have to make sure my language is correct. So, anyway, my unit studies, lesson plans, courses, um, and educational materials, I should say. Melissa, can you clip that? Wait, if you're doing clips, just clip what I just said. We'll document the date. Owen Benjamin, I used to watch him on Vine. Is he doing more than comedy? <laughs> Is Owen doing more than comedy? Oh, yeah. Um, Owen, you can find on unauthorized.tv. They have their own platform that they built out with their own servers. You could also find him on, if you want to watch his stuff for free, he is available on Odyssey. He streams every day at, I think, 1, 1 p.m., 1 p.m. or 1.30 Eastern. And um, Owen has a homestead. He has four children. He has cows, he has goats, he is, um, he's built a wonderful community that I'm a part of, the bear community, and we're all homesteaders, we all have small businesses, we buy from one another, and we build parallel systems outside of the main system, and for me, you know, I build educational systems, that's what I do, and Owen's been a big influence on my life, and I'm very grateful for that, so yeah, you could find him there. It's been a wonderful journey watching you grow. Yeah, Melissa, you're a big part of it, and uh, I can't say enough how much we appreciate you. So, It's a super plan. That's exciting. Can I grow it here? Can I grow it in Cal Carolina? Cats, Brett, cats to eat the rats. Oh, yeah, yeah, I thought, <laughs> I was like, why are you getting rats? I mean, hey, listen, to each their own. But, yeah, cats. Oh, Melissa, if you birth a pure white cat, I would like to take it. If you, if you birth cats and one of them comes out all white, I, I want a white cat because I want to name, I want to get a white cat and I want to name it Charisma and I want to get it a little witch hat. And it will be the official mascot of my homestead. Mormons are killing the homeschool game. Yeah, Mormons crush. What what is it? Um, BJJ. What is whatever it is? I forget the name of it. It's really good. Yeah, Christians crush. Like everyone. I mean, look. Don't get me wrong. Like. A lot of Christians just suck, like just hypocrites, sinful lives. You know, they're like the special boys, father, son, Holy Ghost. I'm the special boy that Jesus loves the most. I believe, so now I go to heaven. Like, no, your actions. How do you live your life? It's about what you do. It's like, I keep up with the Joneses and I live a... Um, gross material life where I chase hookup culture and right like and they don't homeschool their children like they don't educate their children and they'll send their children to these schools with these satanic curriculums that are taught and they just complain they're like well I'll complain it's like how about you have a line like the, I think the whole point of Jesus was like he was showing like you have to have a line Where's your line? Draw a line in the sand. Say, if you're going to teach my children that, I'm going to pull them out of your institution. And if enough Christians did that, because there's so many of them, allegedly, because I don't actually think they're following what I follow, but if enough Christians did that, you realize the school districts would change all of the curriculum, right? Because that's where all their money comes from. 
<sighs> but yeah, but like the Christians that are making homeschool curriculum and, you know, homesteading and building alternative systems, which there are a lot. I know these people like these people like Nettie games, like these people reach out. I don't even know if Nettie's Christian, but Nettie just crushes. But, um, these people, like they reach out to me a lot, which is kind of a crazy thing in my life. Like I'm going to be on another podcast next week. Like uh, apparently it's a really big podcast. I don't even know what it's called, but you know, these people reach out to me. Um, and I see him, so I get a good look at it, and these people crush. Moringa does best in the heat. I do have a greenhouse. Are you on Telegram? Um, I have a Telegram. I think it's Classical Learner. It's either Classical Learner or Brett Pike, but I don't really use it much. Um, but if you wanted to follow me on there, you can. I, I don't promote it, and I, I don't use it much, but I have it. Um, you know. It, it's kind of redundant, the Telegram, to me, because I have everything I would want from a Telegram in our Discord, in Homeschools Connected, right? And that's where we post all our unit studies, our lesson plans, the live courses. Um, I'm going to start a live course later this week. I haven't named, decided which day. Um, where I'm going to start a new live course on the logical fallacies um, that I'm going to teach for the children. It's going to be really cool. You know, straw man arguments, ad hominem arguments, um, appeals to emotion, appeals to authority, all that stuff. Um, you know, all that type of stuff. So I'm, I'm going to do a live class starting later this week. Pretty excited. Of course, I'm clipping. I got part of it froze. The disclaimer, say it again, laugh out loud. Yeah, well, I was just saying that I don't consider, I don't consider classicallearner.com or homeschools connected a curriculum. I just make educational materials. I make lesson plans and unit studies and um, I teach live courses and I've never advertised it as curriculum. I don't claim it's curriculum. And I do that, I make that pretty clear. So if at any future date the system wants to give me a problem, just know that I've never made any claims. Now, people are free to interpret the homeschool law for what it is. And if you look at the different regulations, which are different in every state, parents actually have a tremendous amount of autonomy determining what constitutes appropriate lesson plans, unit studies, for subject matter and different studies. So can parents use my stuff as that? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of lawyers that would claim allegedly that you absolutely can. And that's how I'm going to word it because I like to protect myself for a liability reason because the people that control this world, they like to play a lot of games with words. But I just want the people that to control this world to know that the reason what I do is so valuable is because I understand those games and I am teaching the next generation to understand those games and I'm teaching the next generation how to build parallel systems, alternative systems, so they're not reliant on the rigged game that you set up. They're not reliant on the junk that you set up. And understand this, we will educate our children to understand how to live free. We will educate our children to understand how to operate in alternative systems and there is nothing wrong with that and there is nothing that can rightfully and justfully stop us from doing that does that work melissa I can't believe you would say that. Say what? For now, we have the freedom left. Yo, we have the freedom. That's the thing. Don't Your freedom doesn't come from Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell. That, that's what they want you to think. And by thinking that, you in terms surrender your freedom to these people. Your freedom comes from the manner through which you live your life. Think about this. The government never mailed you a mask. 
every one of these people went to the store and bought it. They never actually forced you to get you know what. They didn't force you. They applied financial leverage on corporations and got those corporations to apply financial leverage on you. But no one makes us keep up with the Joneses. You know, we could all live within our means. And I understand sometimes you need some debt. Like that's, you know, like it's okay to get into some debt because you need to operate your life. But you don't need that $400,000 house, right? Like, oh, I don't want to live in a trailer. Okay, so you just decided you're a special boy and you traded your freedom for being fancy, for social status, for whatever it might be. And now you gave up that freedom, right? No, freedom comes from the manner through which you live your lives. The United States of America is great. No one's making you send your children to public school. You could homeschool your children. You could sign up for Classical Learners Homeschools Connected, and you can give your children a truly unique and better education than 99.9% .9 of the public. And I do stand by that. I do stand by that. I believe in humility. I don't believe in false humility. I am a very unique person, and I don't know why anyone wouldn't want me on your side. I don't know why anyone wouldn't want me in their corner where they could come to me with any question and say, hey, Brett, what do you think? I, I really don't. I don't get why. Like, people pay $20 a month for Netflix. You won't pay $10 a month for me? I, hey, I mean, suit yourself, but, you know, there's there is... Freedom comes from the manner through which we live our lives. And we don't have to keep up with the Joneses. We don't have to embrace their disgusting hookup culture. My wife loves me. My wife trusts me. Because not only do I not um, ever flirt with another woman, but I don't... I have to be careful how I word this stuff because I understand I have young eyes that... I don't ever watch inappropriate things either, right? I don't watch immoral, inappropriate things. I honor my wife as the Bible said I should, right? And then freedom comes from now you have that trust, you have that family, right? You have that trust, you have that family. And because of that, you have a rock, you have stability, you have strength, right? We homeschool our children so that they're not being brainwashed by the system so that they're strong. And as they get older, they'll actually, as they get older, they'll actually be, they won't be a financial burden. Like by the time Brady's 18, he's going to make a ton of money. You know, they won't be a financial burden. They'll be a, an asset to the family. Freedom comes from how you live your life. So, you know, but if, if people um, get caught in honey pots and they embrace hookup culture, this disgusting Western culture, um, I should say this disgusting um, mainstream Western culture that's pushed by the money. I don't even like mainstream as a term. There is this huge alternative culture. Like if you look at the bear community, I was just at a meetup. I gave a speech in Missouri and there were an unbelievable, I don't know how many people were there. It must've been like a thousand people. I, I don't know exactly, but there were a ton of people there and these were all homesteaders, all homeschoolers, just absolute crushers. They all own small businesses and like they get married young. Like Benjamin Balderson must be in his early 40s and he is a grandfather of multiple children. That is a winning culture. People can like, oh my God, our country's being, we're being replaced. Well, do you have any children? No. Yeah, so you're being replaced. You deserve to be replaced. Like, the people that crossed the southern border and now live in New Mexico and California, like, I don't think it's wrong. I don't think, I don't think New Mexico and California doesn't belong to them. I think it belongs to them. They conquered that territory. That's good for them. Like, I tip my cap. I'm not like, oh, my God, why won't the government? They are the government now, right? They came here. They crossed the border, whether illegally or illegally. They put down roots. They had lots of children. They outvoted you, and now it's their territory. It's not your territory. What, why? You're a special boy? Did you have children? Well, no, I didn't have children because they would have been a financial burden, and I wanted a convertible car, 
I wanted a convertible car. Oh, aren't you a special boy? Well, you can't complain about not being free. You can't complain about your freedom being taken. Freedom comes through the way in which we live our lives. The truth is most people don't want to be free. They want to be secure. They want convenience. And that's fine. Like, that is what it is. But then just don't put freedom up as the ideal. I mean, truth be told, I don't even think freedom is the ultimate ideal. I'd rather live in a moral country with rules than a quote-unquote free country. What it, like, freedom from what? Like, every one of you agrees with that. Freedom from what? So should the creepy um, 60-year-old man down the block be able to hit on your 12-year-old daughter? I don't want that kind of freedom. I want the right to exercise control. I want to show that there are lines. And I want there to be authorities that I could call that say, this is a line that our moral culture has set and we will not tolerate that type of behavior here. No, I, I don't think ultimate freedom is even the ultimate ideal. I want to live in a moral society that has lines and that has freedoms within, a, within moral restrictions. And I think everyone, I think even if people don't know it, they agree with that. Freedom from what? Like the stuff they're pushing on our children? I think, I think a lot of the television shows that have been normalized and are on TV should be illegal. I think they are um, pornographic. I think they are pushed at our children on purpose as part of a desensitization, um, a desensitizing campaign that has been weaponized against our people. Um, and, I, and this is all documented. Like, I could get into, what is, it, what is the guy's name? Is it Terrence Mann? Al Goldstein. Look up Al Goldstein, who he was, and what he said about the weaponization of those type of films. And then you'll realize that this type of stuff has been weaponized against our population. And I don't think it's appropriate, like... They do these shows, right, that are written by 60-year-old men. And they're about high school students. These shows are about high school students. So the characters are supposed to be 15, 16 years old. And the entire shows are about the you-know-what type of relationships of these 16-year-olds. And these shows are written by 30, 40, 50, 60-year-old men. Think about that. And they're trying to depict that to our children. I think that is predatory. I think if your great grandparents saw that, they would have said there's no way that should be allowed. But you have been so desensitized in your life that you've accepted, oh, of course that show's on. That show is satanic. That show is predatory toward the truly most vulnerable people in our society, our children, and that show should not be allowed on the air. So, like, when people say freedom is the ultimate ideal, I don't think freedom is the ultimate ideal. I think morality is the ultimate ideal. And freedom within the confines of moral lines. I don't want to live in a society without lines. I, I don't like that when I go on, I don't like when I go into the street that they could have parades in which grown men, there's a, you could extrapolate what you want from this, in which grown men are dressed in thongs and showing their genitalia in public. I think that's highly inappropriate. I think those parades should be illegal. I think that is exposing young people to something that they should not see. And by the way, I'm not hypocritical with that. I don't think, like, um, I was driving the other day, like a month ago, and when I was driving there was a gentleman's club and outside, outside of those gentlemen's club, there were women dressed in thongs um, as a way to, for publicity and to raise money. And they were doing a car wash. And my, my children drove past this. That should be illegal. 
That is exposing young children to something that is highly inappropriate. Freedom is not the ultimate ideal. There is freedom within the confines of moral behavior. And you have um, this culture that has been so pushed by Hollywood, by popular music, that true Christian America has lost that. Where your great-grandparents, if they were dropped into today's society, they would wave their finger in the streets saying, how can you allow this? How has your culture fallen so far into Sodom and Gomorrah? Everyone knows what I'm saying is true. They might want to fight it. Their conditioning might, what are you talking, what are you saying? No, freedom is not the ultimate ideal. Freedom within the confines of morality. And as soon as you lose that, you have given Satan and these forces the ability to take your children. As soon as you accept that, you've given your children to them. Where's your line? I don't want to, I don't want to have a bunch of men around me that don't have a line. I want to surround myself with men who draw a line in the sand and say, this is our culture. This is our nation. And if you cross that line, I will stand up against it. Everyone talks about they want to have masculinity. Where's your line? Owen Benjamin has a line. Benjamin Balderson has a line. Crow has a line. Pat Life has a line. Hardware Bear has a line. These are my, this is my nation. These are my people. Think about that the next time you put on one of these shows. And they're depicting 15, 16 year olds. And these shows, it's all about their you know what life. You know, their you know what life. And these shows are written by 50 year old creepy men. Look up Al Goldstein. Look up what he said about this stuff. And they make it hard to talk about this stuff because when you call this stuff out, well, look what's going to happen to Kanye. Look what's going to happen to, look what happened to Nick Cannon and Whoopi, right? Understand what the true levers of power are in this society. And by the way, I have no animosity against the baker down the street. Understand, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I have no um, animosity against the regular person like that who's just trying to live their lives. They're good people. They're fine. But understand what I'm saying. One day I'll be as cool as you. Netty, you're cooler than me. The games you make, like, I, I have... I haven't met a lot of people just because the nature of what I do who could, who could make an argument. They're like, no, I've made, I've made more of an impact on educational resources than you. But Nettie, if anyone that hasn't seen his games, or, Nettie, or I don't even, Nettie, are you, you're a woman. Are you a woman or a man? I believe Nettie's a woman. If you haven't seen Nettie's games, um, go to NettieGames.com, I believe what it is. You'll, you'll love it. You'll just love it. I don't want to co-parent with the world. What are my thoughts on unschool? Unschooling crushes. Everyone should unschool to some degree. Now, to the degree you want to do it. Like, I don't like, I don't personally like full unschooling where you only teach the children what they want to learn about. But like, if you want to do it that way, I think it's fine. To me, what you want to do is identify your children's interest and make some of their schooling that unschooling where you're following their interest. And then I think it's actually important to have discipline and like, no, there are some things we're going to sit down and learn. Like, I don't care if my child wants to learn math or not. We're going to sit down and we're going to learn the basics of arithmetic. Like my, you know, I don't care if my child wants to learn grammar or not. We're going to sit down and we're going to learn the basics of grammar. And then, you know, you don't have to like, I won't make them do it to a certain point. Like, if, they're, if they don't love math, I won't tell them they have to take advanced algebra. I'll be like, oh, you don't like math? All right, you've gone far enough. You know the basics. You know, now you can unschool and do something else. But, like, I'm going to make them learn the basics of that. 
I think it's silly not to, but if you don't want to, don't. But I do. I love unschooling them. And like children should have discipline. Like it's not good for your child not to have discipline. Like I think it's important that children do chores, that people understand that they're part of a household. The household has a culture. You have responsibilities within the household. Like yesterday at um, baseball, Brady had a really bad day. Like he, um, he got hot and hungry in the middle of the game. He didn't want to go back out onto the field. He was um, kind of like his body language was bad. He was pouting on the field. His at-bat came. He didn't want to go do his at-bat. And I was really hard on him after. And like people were like, why were you hard on him? Because I think it's important that especially for a young boy – that his dad shows him there is an expectation of behavior and it's okay to be hard on your child and set expectations. You're not like, you're not not loving your child by setting expectations. Your, your child will appreciate that you set those expectations, that you draw lines, that you say there's expected behavior, there's expected degrees of helping out around the house. Like, so like, although I like unschooling and I think it should be done to a degree, I also think that stuff is very important. What makes you so special? You figure it out. My kids enjoy your books. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, for one, my books make me special. Not in that I'm a special boy and that I'm just unique. And look who created our workbooks. The family of Ghislaine Maxwell. Yes, they were involved in the textbooks um, that many of our children use. <laughs> Maybe if you listen, you'll learn something. I want freedom from sedition. <laughs> Don't want the shoes, don't go to the parade. No, you're completely wrong about that. When, if a child is walking down the street and some guy pulls up, some random man pulls up in a white van, pops out of the van and exposes himself to that child, should that man be put in a prison cell? So you think that a mother should be walking down the street, like they're in New York City and they're like, hey, little Johnny, let's go to the bakery today. You want cookies? Let's go to the bakery. And as that mother's walking down the street, she sees a bunch of legal adults, grown men, exposing themselves in front of that child. How is that any different? How is that any different? No, that should be a crime. That's horrific behavior. That's not the type of country I want to live in. You expose yourself to a minor... Like, this isn't rocket science. This, this, is why, this is why America's so fallen. Because America doesn't have a line anymore. Where's your line? You think it's okay to, for a child to be exposed to that because a grown man wants to have a parade? That's ridiculous. And by the way, I feel the same way about a woman. Like, a woman shouldn't be able to expose herself to a child that way. It's not appropriate. And the example I gave was that, sh that gentleman's club. Shouldn't be allowed. What are you talking about? No, no, that's not... Yeah, I'm being the change. You don't think I'm being the change? I literally create culture every day. What do you think I'm doing right now? I'm saying these hard truths that... And I'm an influencer, by the way. And I'm speaking these hard truths that get people into trouble and most people don't want to speak. I am being the change. And if you don't like, yes, you be the change in that. Yes, I literally sold my house to get out of debt, moved my family across the country, started a homestead, grow my own food, started my own small business in which I teach people homeschooling, create educational resources every day, homeschool my children. I am the definition of be the change. But part of being the change 
is by looking at that taboo things and saying, no, that should be illegal. That's not inappropriate. That is predatory toward children. And I'm right. The company is, the company boss is a man. I am our research and social media and a woman. Okay, so Netty Games, so Netty's a woman. And the, I guess the guy who owns Netty Games is a man. Is that your husband? Can you explain unschooling? Do you just let them explain? choose what they want to learn in addition to the basics. So unschooling at its purest form is you only study what the child wants to study. So, you know, if they're into bugs, you just start studying bugs. And then, you know, you could use the study of bugs to teach them what they want. Like, oh, how many bugs, do, how many legs does this bug have? Six. How many legs does this bug have? Four. So how many more legs does this bug have than this bug, right? And you start teaching them math. Um, unschooling is amazing. At its purest form, it's only follow what the child wants to learn. I advocate for more of a hybrid where you follow the child's interest, but you also, for certain things, you teach them what you want them to learn. I mean, if you want to just unschool, do it. But I, I, to me, I think it's um, a mistake to do that. Full, 100% unschool. And then like what you want to do is you want to follow your child's interest and then use that to develop skills and get them entrepreneurial experience. So like if your child is into art, you could start to show them like embroidery and that type of art, take them to five and below, get them $200 worth of white shoes for $5 a shoe, have them embroid their art designs onto the shoes, start a business in which they sell those shoes at a local farmer's market or online. And you just... You follow their interests, you develop real skills like those art skills, and then you get them real entrepreneurial experience. Absolute freedom. Absolutely not. You think I want to live? That's why, like, that's why these ANCAPs, too, are these people who are like, we need to get rid of the government. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you think getting rid of the government is going to work to your advantage? <laughs> What, what happens anytime there's a power vacuum? Like, what happens when they take out Gaddafi in Libya? How's that working for them? No, part of freedom is taking back your government. And you do that through sheriff's office. You do that through the local school board. You do that through your local politics, not federal. Like, get involved in your local politics. You should be... I encourage every one of you to be very involved in local politics. I mean, you don't think you, don't think you want um, a zoning commission where you live? Like, zoning commissions are so important. Like, I, I, have, I have a homestead in a rural area. Do you know how pissed off I would be if they just built a Walmart next to where I live? No, I don't want them to be able to build a Walmart. You need zoning. Like, these, these are important. Like, people, people are like, oh, government's bad. Government is just a tool. Government is no different than a hammer. And because people don't know their rights, people don't understand their rights, they're unable to figure out how to use that tool to their advantage. So they're like, oh, get rid of it. Like, the people that are trying to subvert your country, they want you to get rid of that tool. Because once they get rid of that tool... Like, do you think, do you want the banking system to be subject to the terms and conditions of PayPal? Look what PayPal's terms and conditions are. People just found out that PayPal could withdraw $2,500 from your PayPal account every time you say something that they construe as hateful. That is hell on earth. 
You don't want your financial system to be the term. You want your government to be the terms and conditions of Twitter. That's a nightmare. No, the government is your friend. The Bill of Rights and the American Constitution are incredibly powerful documents. Two of the most powerful documents in human history. The Declaration of Independence is one of the most powerful documents in human history. Get rid of the government. Eh, wrong. Don't do that. <sighs> His wife is an adorable little lady. They're in Texas, based in Georgia. I got hired because I had opinions, recommendations. That's on his first. That's cool. Yeah, we're getting chickens and we're getting bees. And that's what we're going to start off with. And then we are, um, once we establish that, we're going to look into goats and cows. But that might take a couple of years. All right, guys. Well, this has been a terribly enjoyable stream for me. I've talked about a lot of things that I'm very passionate about. And um, I think I'm going to call a stream on that. For anyone who wants to sign up for what I do, get access to all the lesson plans, the unit studies, and the courses that I teach, including the live course on logical fallacies I'm starting this week, um, you could sign up at www.classicallearner.com. You'll see Homeschools Connected. Our private homeschool community is called um, homes, it's, it's, um, Homeschools Connected, and it's $10 a month with the discount code FREEDOM. You get access to all of that, including our homeschool community. Or if you just want to support what I do, because everyone should support what I do. Um, and freedom is a free. We have to earn it every day. I'll be back sometime tomorrow between 9.30 and 12 to earn that freedom. And um, that'll be super cool. So, I look forward to that. All right, guys, I'm going to drink for 10 seconds in honor of Melissa. Melissa.